Ladies and gents, welcome to the video. I'm Get Good Guy back with another full length Battle of Five video because I just work all the time. And uh, let's be realistic support class popularity isn't exactly at an all time high right now. In fact, it seems pretty damn low when you look at the usage rate of the class in your average lobby. And it wasn't always this way. Remember the days of the dominant MMG or the Lewis gun being all over the place, and yet we're not there anymore. And I've seen many, many people say recently that they just can't see a reason to use it currently. And those who are savvy with analyzing stats tend to highlight that actually the class doesn't have many advantages at this point in this build of the game. Now a lot of this comes down to playing norms, weapon balance and class mechanics. And so today I'm going to go over the detrimental aspects of using support, why it's struggling, why it isn't popular and how we got to this point. But I don't think the class is entirely devoid of value. I say that based upon both looking in depth at what it's capable of, especially some specific weapons and actually playing with the class to find out how it personally felt for me to use. I did manage to do well with it, actually better than I had expected, and I'm sure there are some very very capable support players out there who excel with the class on a regular basis. So after covering the downsides of the class, I'll also very quickly go over some of the positive aspects that do still encourage at least some usage of this class. But let's start off with those drawbacks. Well, mid to long range is now dominated by self-loading rifles and semi-auto rifles, as was easily predictable when looking at the damage charts DICE released prior to the 6.2 update. Myself and some people that know a lot more than me about stats very quickly honed in on some of the problems, as I covered in my 16 minute analysis of the new TTK. As of right this moment, semi-auto rifles in particular are super easy to use, super potent, super versatile and can fit into either a passive or aggressive movement based playstyle with ease. The barrier to entry for semi-auto rifles is low, and gaining many of the benefits of using them requires little effort or skill, but there's also quite a high skill ceiling, meaning if someone can regularly hit headshots or just not miss their shots, they're gonna just destroy people around them. This is why you see so many really good players running around with like the MAS-44, or the Turner SMLE, or the Gewehr 1-5, etc. But outside of those top tier players, the semi auto rifles are just easy to control, they don't require consistent damage output, they allow for peak shooting and they often put an enemy down in 3 or 4 shots out to long mid range. Not so so the LMGs of the support class, otherwise known as the popular reason to use the support class at this stage. They now generally require an extra bullet to kill at mid range when compared with the 5.0 build which was the TTK that a lot of people liked, but semi auto rifles generally maintain the same potency as they did before. LMGs aren't as versatile, aren't as movement friendly, require more shots to kill, often have more recoil to manage and require consistent damage output due to lower damage per bullet. Essentially it's harder to use them to rapidly enter and exit out of gunfights, landing big damage on one shot and avoiding taking damage yourself. The question is, why select one over the multitude of extremely potent semi-auto rifles, of which it feels like there is one for essentially all ranges and engagements? And if we consider the ranges at which LMGs are supposed to prosper, their key competition is the semi-auto rifle. This is not a good spot for the LMG. Now they do allow for more of a spray and prey nature, but that isn't particularly rewarding right now, as at close range other spray and prey weapons are better, SMGs, the M1907 etc, and at mid range again any competent player can easily take out a less than accurate person spraying a machine gun if they themselves have a semi auto rifle, or a self loading rifle, or can control the STG well or whatever it may be. Now a lot of people that want to criticise what I'm saying will have to go for a very specific or narrow look at this, and say something like the BAR is a great CQC option, and it is, there's no denying that, but it's capped at 20 rounds per reload, you can't heal up with it whereas you can with any SMG due to being a medic, and it actually kills more slowly in very very close quarters than the M1907SF, the Type 2A, the Suomi etc, so most other people will ask well then why bother? Because also if you want to fight outside of 10 meters, certainly at say 20 to 30 meters, you'll just use something else anyway. Expanding from this we can say that using an MMG now generally doesn't offer a particularly large advantage, when weighing up its positives against the negatives of being less versatile, requiring being prone or behind cover the vast majority of the time, not being a good option for reactionary play usually, and again suffering at the hands of semi-auto rifle users, not to mention being pretty easy pickings for bolt actions and self-loading rifles, partially due to faster bullet velocity for bolt action rifles and improved visibility now than when compared with the earlier build of the game. Yes it can still be tough to pick people out, but not as hard as before, so because MMGs used to use that to their advantage, some of their significant 
significant positives have now been chipped away and they're just very very limiting to use a lot of the time and I personally would rather have an LMG 100 times out of 100. And shotguns, the other weapon in the class. Shotguns can be great, they really really can, but the main point is that they're only great a really 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 small percentage of the time due to the map and mode design of the game. Even in Team Deathmatch, a lot of the areas are far too wide open for shotguns to be the efficient choice, especially with a fair few SMGs killing extremely quickly anyway. And if you miss a shotgun blaster it doesn't kill the person, the SMG user is just going to kill you most of the time. Then there's attrition. At this point it seems like ammo attrition is nowhere near as problematic to deal with as health attrition. I don't seem to be running out of ammo as frequently and I stay alive for a pretty long time when compared with the average player. You can also pick up guns and a small amount of ammo from dead bodies. If you need ammo you can just try to get away from enemy fire to get to a resupply station, whereas health is far more of an issue still. Trying to flee through the open to get health while weak will see you die a lot of the time anyway. Because if you have health and you choose not to challenge an enemy because you have low ammo and instead tank a little of that damage to get away doesn't lead to your death. But challenging the enemy when you have low health or trying to tank a little bit of damage when you have low health both lead to death the majority of the time. And I'm certain that most players die far more often due to low health issues before they run out of ammo. And so this somewhat negates or draws away some of the positives of using support for resupplying. It's no longer quite as important or valuable, whereas Medic has remained as valuable as ever. Especially with Medic being able to revive people as well. And so then that leaves us with the other support gadgets. As the ammo resupplying ones, the bulk of the gadget usage, the main reason to use support when it comes to gadgets aren't as important now. Well the other gadgets are basically weak anti-tank stuff, so most players would likely rather use assault for that. A great one that support does have are the mines, but tanks aren't really pushing in due to vehicle balancing, so the mines aren't as useful as they would be. But having covered all of that, and while that is all important, I won't say that the class isn't exactly bad. Despite it not being, in my opinion, a strong class now, it can still be used to great effect by the right player. I didn't feel as though it was stopping me from competing and being of value. In fact, I was able to finish around the top of the board in Conquest consistently and pick up a fair amount of kills. If the class was truly awful, I don't feel like that would be the case. So it's not terrible, it's just not great. And I expected it to be worse in practice. I was pleasantly surprised, but not to a massive degree. So the utility of a bipod is always valuable, as long as you don't feel forced to rely upon it. Shotguns can be very good when you know you're going to be in very, very, very close quarters engagements often, although we have covered why they're not an efficient choice, the vast majority of the time. But the Madsen is a standout option for the LMGs, due to its consistent 5 bullets to kill out of 50 meters and 6 bullets to kill beyond that, all while being very stable. That's unusual for the automatic weapons right now, and it's one of the few slower firing automatics that can actually be good at the minute, and it's a very viable option if you don't want to be too aggressive. The Lewis gun does allow you to have a far larger magazine than we used to in this game. The MG42 can be lethal, especially if you can also get used to using it for close quarters hip fire, and despite ammo attrition not being as important now as covered, it is still a positive aspect. Plus there's a few other things but we've gone on long enough here. Basically the support class is arguably the weakest class overall now, at least in my opinion, considering the range dominance you can get from recon and the spotting opportunities with the flare. The support class either way certainly isn't top tier, I think that's objectively the case, but it's not terrible. It's not dead or ruined and it can still be a worthy choice for the right player. It's not as far behind as I had feared it would be, but it's still not in a particularly balanced state. And that is my rundown of the support class right now. But what do you think? Do you like the class? What do you like about it? What are the problems with it? And what would you change? Let me know in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please do leave me a like. It makes a big difference. It helps the channel to grow. If you're new here, do consider subscribing and turning on notifications to stay up to date with the massive amount of content I'm putting out and will continue to put out. And all the links to my social media, including Patreon, can be found in the description and my pinned comment. Here is the Board of Awesome for the epic people who already support me on Patreon. They're all absolute heroes, and I love them all deeply and, of course, often. If you want to join them on the Board of Awesome, the link to the Patreon page is in the description and my pinned comment. And with that all said, I'm Get Good Guy, and I'll see you next time, laters.
Next tip, beat morons. Yes, I do mean this. Morons on your team. Look, beating your teammates so you can get the kill isn't a good thing to do, but if you have some teammates or squad mates that are just running in all the time and getting mowed down, use that to your advantage. If they're gonna just run in there and get killed anyway, follow up. Let them go first, follow up, 